Okay, Pastor Marty, we are live. Thank you so much for awesome. hopping on here today. Friends, I want to introduce you. A lot of you know this amazing man, but some of you do not. And I want to tell you the dirt <laughs> behind Pastor <laughs> Marty. No, there is some good stuff. There's the goal of this conversation is this conversation today is going to empower you. This conversation is going to inspire you to live completely, fully healthy. And so there is so much that you're going to gain just from our brief conversation here. But first off, everyone, this is my friend, brother in Christ, um, from my home away from home at Christ Fellowship Church in Dawsonville, Georgia, <laughs> home of the North Georgia Revival. Um, Marty also, I shameless plug here, Pastor Marty. He Come did on. the cover design of my latest book. Bible. Oh, uh, speaking in tongues. He did this yep. cover design. And um, so anyway, but what many of you might not know about Marty is he is a health coach. Uh, Pastor Marty is a health coach. I am a Christian life coach. And so I messaged him a few weeks ago and I said, let's get on Facebook Live, and let's talk coach to coach. And really, your testimony is so inspiring that I think people see you now, they really don't know where you have come from. Five years ago, five years ago, Marty lost 50 pounds in like two and a half months. Yep, two and a half months. So this was five years ago. So I would like for you to kind of tell us a little bit of your backstory of what your life was like and what led you into becoming a health coach. Yeah, well, first of all, Miss Linda, thank you for allowing me to come on here. You're like notorious around the globe. That's for right. <laughs> all your lives and everything you do. <clears throat> your devotion with Pastor Todd on speaking in tongues. Uh, I did the cover. So, man, just from doing youth ministry for 18 years, you have to learn to wear many hats, become your own graphic designer, become your own spokesperson, become your own website designer, become like whatever. You just start to wear many hats. And so it was an honor to design that that graphic for you guys. But, uh, but yeah, I did youth ministry for 18 years and um, I was always pretty healthy. Um, I considered myself pretty healthy. I was three sports in high school, um, graduated, you know, at 130 pounds soaking wet and, um, but ended up getting married, having a couple of kids. My wife, after she gave birth to our two daughters, she got rid of her, her weight and I kept putting mine on. And so all the pizza parties and the hamburger eating contest and the ice cream socials and all the different things that come with youth ministry and church in general, it just took a toll on my body. And I never looked in the mirror and thought, man, you, you're a large, um, I guess it just came so slowly. I just got numb to it and used to it. But then one day, Linda, I'll never forget it. It was in 2016. We were getting ready to take our youth group, um, about 100 something kids and youth leaders to a, a fall retreat. And I bent over to tie my shoe that morning. And I felt like somebody had me in a chokehold just to tie my shoe. I couldn't breathe. Wow. Um, I, I didn't feel like my heart was fluttering, but it was like, whoo. You know, there's something that just kind of shocked me right there. It kind of took my breath away, um, honestly. And and I looked up in the mirror and my head was just blood red. Uh, and I was like gasping for air just to tie my shoe. So that was a major, major wake up call for me. Um, and I'd always told people, and my heart was always this, that I was in so much love with student ministry, youth and young adult ministry. I remember telling youth pastors in large group meetings from all over the nation, we would come together and I'd stand up in a room of 75 to 100 youth pastors and leaders. And I would begin to talk and I would tell them my heart is to do youth ministry till I'm in my 80s or 90s. You know, I, I see myself and my wife, Paula, we saw ourselves doing youth ministry well into our 70s and 80s and 90s because we just had such a heart for it. But when I would say that, Holy Spirit would tell me, well, you're not preparing your body for that your heart may be ready to do youth ministry in your seventies and eighties and nineties. Yeah. But what you're doing wow. to your body speaks something completely different. And, um, wow. so, uh, I was in that moment that morning when I just had this epiphany of, Oh my gosh, my dad had triple bypass when he was like 59, 60 years old. 
Um, I just turned 51 last November. So I'm like, eh, I better, I better do something. And I had a great friend, a dear friend of mine who was also in full-time ministry um, who reached out to me and he said, Marty, um, it was just perfect timing. He reached out to me in a time when I posted a picture of me and Paula on the treadmill. I called it a treadmill because I hate that dumb machine, but we were on the treadmill and I took a selfie of me and my wife and I said, here we go again. You know, one of those first of the year kind of things, here we go again, you know, trying to take back our health. And my buddy from uh, Rockford, Illinois, Dan Valentine, he reached out to me and he's like, Marty, you and Paula are in the gym all the time. And I replied back, I know, man, I'm trying to, trying to get healthy. And he responded back with something nobody had ever asked me, Linda. His reply back to me was, Marty, are you getting the results you're looking for? And I had to be honest. I had to be honest. And I, I said, man, I'm not. I'm not. And it took, it took a bold leap for me to say that. I could have easily just said, no, nah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Everything's going to be fine. I'm on the treadmill. We'll, we'll endure it, you know. But I said, no, I'm not good. I'm not. And I finally admitted to, some, to somebody yes. that I was in trouble. I was. I was in trouble. And I said, I'm not getting results I'm looking for. Can you help me? And he said, I can. Let's hop on a call. So I got on a call with him, and he told me about this program and um, told me how, how it worked. And I was like, wait a minute. There's no shots, no pills, no gels that I wrap on my, you know, wipe on my yeah. stomach and hopefully shrink <laughs> it up. And he's like, he's like, no, nah, man, that's that's that salesy gimmicky kind of stuff that we don't do. We are very we have we have great character in this company. Um, we're not salesy gimmicky. We actually care about people. And uh, there's no pills. There's no shots. Matter of fact, Marty, there's no exercise required. And when he said that, my ears and my heart perked up. I'm like, tell me. Cause I'd been the gym, I'd been in the gym for eight years doing everything I could, but I was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I was getting thicker muscles getting bigger, but so was my gut it was just like, ah. Yeah. And so finally um, I, I jumped on the program. I found out it was super simple in my first week. I was down like nine pounds. Um, results are typical, but they are predictable. So uh, mm -hmm. I was like, man, we found something. And so we knew right away that we were going to be health coaches. Uh, matter of fact, I signed up to become a client and a coach the same day. The client side of me wanted to enjoy the weight loss portion and the lifelong transformation side. But the coach side of me said, I know that there are a ton of my friends, pun intended, <laughs> a ton of my friends and a lot of my family that need to take back our health. And wow. I'm going to help some people. If I can help one or two, I'm going to help one or two. If you know to do good, do good. Yep. And so I found something that, that I knew would work for us. And so Linda, long story short, for all your Facebook followers and friends and everybody tuning in, um, I jumped on the program. I thought I needed to lose 25 to 30 pounds. I dropped 50 pounds in two and a half months on this program. Um, again, no exercise required. We eat six small portion control meals a day, every two to three hours to get our body into a gentle state of fat burn. And then uh, once we do, man, the weight just starts to melt away. And then we transition off when we get to our desired weight. We coach people through the process. Me and Paula, we've been coaching five years. We've coached wow. thousands. I think I looked the other day and in our organization, uh, we have about 130, 140, maybe close to 150. It's growing so quick. About 140 coaches that partner with us all across the nation. Wow. And all of our clients equal about 4,000 people that we've helped in the past five years. Wow, that's impressive. And so here's the elephant in the room for us, because both of us are in ministry. Uh, both of us are committed to the Lord Jesus and the gospel. And so here's the elephant in the room. And that is the church does a great job about talking about the top three, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, you know, keep that sin out of your life. But what we don't talk about, what you rarely hear about, matter of fact, when's the last time you heard of a pastor stand up in the pulpit and preach on health. It's rare because ministry revolves around food, ice cream socials, dads and donuts, moms and muffins, you know, boys and bagels. <laughs> it's just what we do. It's, it's food. We always fellowship around food. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is food, right? There <laughs> so, is. I think somebody yeah. said that. 
but um, but but watch this. I did some research, Linda, and I found out it's very staggering. But seventy three percent, according to CDC and all the research, seventy three percent of Americans, not around the world, Americans, seventy three point six of us are considered overweight or obese. Almost seventy four percent, and that's just people twenty and above. You know as well as I do. There's teenagers that are obese yes. and overweight. There's young people. And so that's just 74%, 73.6 to be accurate, from the CDC, Center of Disease Control, have said almost 74% of Americans are yeah. overweight or obese. But watch this. Mm -hmm. A professor in Purdue did a study, and he found out that the church, no. the church's <laughs> number it. of overweight and obese, just in the church, far outweighs the general population. The church is more obese and overweight than any other demographic. Okay. That's a Purdue professor that did this research. And um, that, that, that's alarming to me. And matter of fact, he said there's a certain uh, two den denominations. There are two denominations that lead in the nation. They lead in overweight and obesity statistics. And so that that should be a wake up call for us. We we talk about wanting to go into all the world, but our bodies are not equipped to do that. That's right. We can't handle the hiking and the walking. I mean, Jesus, man, they walked everywhere they went, they traveled by foot. We want to live like him, but we don't want to have the the healthy diet and the nutrition discipline that they had. Well, I'm so, like I'm like this person that's the radical worshipper. So anybody out there that doesn't know me. If you go into a church service, I'll be the one like running laps and doing cartwheels because I'm just like that. I'm just like, but, but I realized like even this past Sunday at my church, like I was like, as I was worshiping just so hard and I was like, I have to stay in shape because in order to worship <laughs> and yeah. um, I mean, it just, but it's everything like it is everything that we take care of our temple, like yeah. that, um, what, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to ask you, what exactly does stewardship look like in your life every day? Because we are called to steward our bodies. We are the temple and stewardship. I was reading earlier. Um, I just want to read this one little thing on stewardship that what my Bible says, yeah. um, a steward is one who manages the affairs of another. A steward is not the owner but the operator, the steward only exercises the power resources or responsibilities given him or her with the interest and the mindset of the owner at heart and in focus. Jesus notes that faithful and wise stewards are known by their obedience. Mm. Isn't that so good? Um, that's good. That's really good. And, you know, in first Corinthians, 6 19 through 20 says do you not know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have from god and you are not your own for you were bought at a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's so it says right here in scripture that our bodies are not our own that they were bought at a price so the word stewardship just like you know, is, is so key to this. So tell me, what are you doing to steward your temple? Well, like what does your, you know, with health coaching, with ministry, with everything, what does your normal day-to-day -day life look like? Yeah. Well, you used to say, and that's a great, that's a great definition of stewardship. I don't even know. I don't, no need for me to even expound on that. That is exactly what that is. I'm bought, I'm, I am bought at a price. I won't speak for anybody else. I've been bought at a price. Yeah. It's not my own body. It's his. So mm -hmm. now he gets to flow through me. I get to host the kingdom, right? And so, and so if I'm hosting the kingdom, he has to trust me to take care of the house that the kingdom is in. The, yes. the Bible says our bodies are the temple. Our, our bodies are the temple. So, mm -hmm. so I used to make a joke out of it and say, I'm giving the Lord more room to work with. And I would make jokes and say, I'm just big boned. 
I'm not big boned. I'm big bodied. Come on, man. <laughs> There's <laughs> skeletons look about the same. You know, they're, they're very thin bones. I don't, I've never seen big bone skeletons. I see the skeletons that look almost identical, the same size. It's what we put on the exterior. And so stewardship to me, um, every day, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it starts off as daily disciplines, but daily disciplines soon become daily habits. Mm -hmm. What I work for early on, I can soon walk in. It just takes a season of okay. having a mindset shift of this is not my own. I owe it to my king. I owe it to my family. I owe it to my ministry. I owe it to the people he's called me to. I owe it to the mission field. I'll be going mm -hmm. Tuesday to Honduras for several days, preaching, baptizing down there. I've got to get my body ready for that. I feel like, Linda, that, that, that the Lord desperately wants to send people. People are putting their hand up saying, send me, send me, send me. Mm -hmm. but, but, but we've got our hand in, in other foods and other things that prevent us from being able to be used by the Lord. He's like, I want to use you, but I can't send you because you're ill-equipped. You're not, you're not battle ready. I need people that I can call on in a split second that have prepared mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And so stewardship looks like I don't try to balance everything anymore. I don't even know what the word balance really is. Balance means I'm staying still and I'm trying to prop two things up and I'm trying not to drop them. I don't wow. want to stand still. I'm constantly on the move. So instead of balancing, uh, my wife explains it this way, instead of balancing where we're standing still trying to hold something, we're just juggling. We're always on the move, juggling things. Sometimes he'll throw, you know, a season of ministry or mission trip or family or this yeah. or that. We're just constantly being ready to juggle and we're moving, constantly moving and we're easily turned left or right. He said, I will order your steps. I will tell you, mm -hmm. don't go left, go right. right. Don't take a step forward, take a step back and pivot and turn this way. He'll speak to us. But if we're not ready physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, the physical part is taking care of what goes in. Just like you read the word, you, you discipline yourself to read the word. You take in the word, mm -hmm. meditate on the word, you become the word. You're able to, to regurgitate that word back out. And so, and so as you take in the word to build up your spirit, man, we have to take in the right foods, nutrition, diet, exercise, sleep, all these things that equate to a good, healthy body. That is stewardship. It's not my body. It's his. Once you realize that and you get that click, then you can start taking the necessary necessary steps to move in that direction to better health. So as a coach, um, as you're talking, I'm hearing the questions out there. I'm hearing people say, okay, Marty, you don't understand. I, I love everything that you're saying. I want to be disciplined, but I just haven't been able to. I feel like I have a stronghold in my life that I've never really been able to overcome this eating thing. I've never been able to overcome this emotional emotional eating thing or mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So um, as a, as the coach, what, you know, what are you going to do to come alongside someone and help them move forward? Yeah. So none of us were, were born. I don't believe any of us were born with this food addiction or these, these things that we can't break. I don't think we were, I don't think any of us were born that way. And I've got scripture to back it up. We were fearfully, wonderfully mm -hmm. made in his image, we were made somewhere along the line, um, elementary school, middle school, high school, somewhere along the line, uh, we, we got into poor food choices, fast food choices. And Linda, let me just say this, all those fast food restaurants out there, what do we call those fast food restaurants that are a dime a dozen on every corner? We call those fast food restaurants, chain restaurants. Yeah. They're called chains for a reason. That's good. That's a good word. They are called chains for a reason wow. because it's fast, it's quick, it's easy. Um, easy isn't always better. Fast isn't always better. Sometimes you got to slow down to grow. You need to slow Amen. to grow. Amen. You know, uh, we got to get back to the kitchen where families are getting around the table and getting in the kitchen and preparing our fresh foods together that the Lord gave us fruits, yes. vegetables, fish, meats. Yes. It, listen. Uh, yeah. But the people who are saying, I can't do it, it's, it's an addiction, I've got, that, that's, yeah. that's not true. He gave us a promise. He gave us a covenant. Um, he told us he wants us to prosper, even as our soul prospers. He wants us to prosper in our finances. He wants to prosper in our mind, our will, our emotions, our bodies. He wants us to prosper in every way. 
And so I was the same way. I was stuck in, in yeah. a situation that I felt like I could never break. But our system comes along. Listen, I'm, I'm not that smart. I, I didn't come up with this program. I just took the program yeah. as a tool. It's a tool. It'll work if you apply it. If you leave it in the barn, it's going to sit in the barn and rust. But if you take the tool that we give you, it's very simple, um, very simple steps to, to make these better eating choices that you don't have to do the work. We've done the work for you. You can take these, these, this program and the habits we teach, and these habits will break cycles off your life that you've been accustomed to. It broke cycles off my life. We are, create, we are creatures of habit. Yes. Every night before I went to bed, I would, I would tell you, it was either a humongous bowl of fruity pebbles, it was a half a box of vanilla wafers, it was yeah. a sleeve of graham crackers. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you my stuff. I'm owning my ugly right now. But, but that's where I was. I was stuck in that. I was stuck in sweet tea in the South. I was stuck in, yeah. you know, <laughs> biscuits and gravy and bacon on everything. But we just decided we were tired of that lifestyle. We were, we were under conviction that if I'm the temple that he's yeah. trusted, if, if this is the temple he's trusted me with, this is my temple, the, the thumbprint. Nobody else on planet Earth has this thumbprint. Nobody before or during or after I'm gone, nobody will ever have this thumbprint. It's, my, it's the temple he gave me. And how dare me use excuses and blame, well, the enemy's got me and the enemy's got me in this, in this, in this bondage and the enemy, the enemy, the enemy. Wait a minute. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. If the, if the, if all authority has been given to Jesus, how much does the enemy have? Man, come on. We have the greatest, the, the greatest gift on this side of heaven. We have the greatest gift ever given to us. That is the gift of salvation, and salvation is saving something, rescuing something, finding something that was lost, and giving it new life. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, you are a new creation. You got to make up in your mind. I'm not going to be stuck in this anymore. I have to have help. That's the biggest component of this, Linda. Is yeah. I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to ask this question. If you're out there listening, going, man, I would love some help. I just don't know if I can do this, and that, and it's probably not for me, uh, probably wouldn't work for me. I've never seen this program not work, not one time. I've seen people not work. I've seen people want to go back to certain, certain things. I can't, I can't help that. I can't. You're your own person. But I have people say, well, I can't, I can't do this. It's not for me. I can't afford it. I ain't got the time to do it. You, got, you don't have time to eat. You don't have time to drink. We <laughs> provide you. We provide you with five of the six meals. The shakes, the smoothies, the bars. We got all the stuff. What do you mean you have time? What do you mean? What do you mean you can't afford it? You're already spending money on food and yes. drink now. You just yes. take what you're spending now and roll it over into this program yes. to take back your life. You're not just taking back your health. You're taking back your life. So, so when people say, you know, I just, I, I just don't know if it's for me. I can't afford it. It's, it's just, it's not going to work. Well, you won't know until you step out of the boat, Peter. That's so good. You won't know you can walk <laughs> on that water until you step out. So, I mean, and I have to say, guys, out of anybody, you can trust Pastor Marty. <laughs> anybody, <laughs> you can trust this man. Like, there's no way this man can lie to you. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to put you on a pedestal. I'm not trying to put you on a pedestal, Marty, but no, no. The, the man, yeah, he, he's not going to, he can't lie to you. <laughs> That's all well, I'm here's saying. the beautiful thing. Here's the beautiful thing, Miss Linda, is 2017, if you remember, you know about the North Georgia Revival. You've been here many times. You're a friend and family of the house here um, in Dawsonville, Georgia. But in 2017 is when I jumped on this program thinking I need to take back my health. I'm a youth pastor. I need to take back my health. I had no idea the Lord was preparing me for one year later. He knows all things. He knows all things. He knew that he would send revival to North Georgia where we would be in the water from eight o'clock on Sunday nights till Monday morning at 630 sometimes. Who can do that? Who has that endurance? Who has that stamina? And so the Lord was preparing our temple, our body to be able to handle what he was going to do and the requirement he was going to place on our lives for prayer. This is, listen, this is just not about health and taking back your body. This is about 
getting your mind right, getting your yes. heart right, getting your getting everything right. And so I'll say this, and I'll be quiet, but stewardship, you, men, you mentioned stewardship. We know what good stewardship is. It's taking what you have, studying the scriptures, reading the scriptures, studying to know him, study to show yourself approved, quiet time, worship. We know all the elements coming together to assemble yourself as, you know, we, right. we get it. We, we understand good stewardship. Poor stewardship is overweight, obese, don't have time to read my Bible. Only time I get into the presence of God is Sunday morning church service, maybe two times a year at Easter and Christmas. That is poor stewardship. That is poor stewardship. No way around it. There's no, there's no finger pointing because when I point my finger at you, I've got three pointing back. That was me for a long time. Yeah. That was me for a long time, just kind of like going through the motions and getting caught up in the cycle. Break that Jesus came to break those chains. Come on. When you're eating right though, and you you're really taking care of your body, it's amazing how much more clarity you have in your mind and just anxiety and depression and all that like mental health stuff. I mean, it just it really takes away all of that kind of stuff. So I mean, there's so many reasons yeah. why you know, practically speaking, why we would want to be healthy, but tell and me, it will rob you of your, it'll rob you of your finances too, because right now in America, I think there's like $123 billion in healthcare that people, people, Americans are required to be paying out for surgeries and all these different things and all of our health issues. It's a billion, multi-billion dollar business because one thing we've not taken care of ourselves. Now I know there's COVID, there's pandemics, there's other things that factor in, but if we will take care of ourselves and get our immune systems built up to such a degree, stay healthy, do the best we can. There's no guarantee, but we do the best we can with what we have oh. so that God can do the best he, ha he can do with what he has. I'm going to say that um, in 2009, when I had cancer, I, had just, I was 34 years old. I had stage three cancer randomly. I just stumbled upon that and ended up in a coma on life support, given less than 5% chance of survival. It was through the power of prayer, through divine intervention, that the Lord miraculously healed me. But when I woke up from the coma, I was told I would be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And I would have a trach, have oxygen for the rest of my life. Mm. And by the grace of God, I ran a half marathon a year later. Um, however, I will never, ever, ever forget after being diagnosed with cancer, regretting and just wishing I could have had my time back, wishing mm. I could have had my life back, wishing I could have done something differently. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the things that I know now and we're educated on now, you know, um, it's just, you know, there were things that I was putting in my body that just was, it was not healthy. It was not healthy. Sure. And it was a perfect breeding ground between medications and processed foods and all of that, that it was a perfect breeding ground for me to end up with lymphoma. Mm -hmm. um, but I can tell you after going through just traumatic experience like that, that you want more than anything to be able to have your days in your life back. And so we want to absolutely today to, um, you know, you might be feeling fine. You might not be feeling completely miserable, but we want to encourage you to go ahead and get a hold of your life now, like take charge, take control of your health now, because honestly, more than anything, it is about honoring the Lord and stewarding mm -hmm. the Lord's temple. I mean, we get to carry, we get to carry the presence of God. Like he habitates inside of us, the creator yeah. of the universe habitates he lives inside of us this is a big 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 deal so whenever we focus on that and shift our mindset it changes things it, it, it gives you a desire to want to pursue health so marty tell me this um i know something that i've heard from you i haven't heard a lot about this from you but i would like to know um yeah. is how has this being a health coach in in having this program how has it financially helped you and Paula and helped you just in your personal life? How, how has it helped you bless others? You know, how, how yeah. has it impacted you financially speaking? Oh, great question. Um, 
you know, you never get into ministry for the money. Um, obviously, you get into it for the call of God on your life. Um, our churches and, yeah. and our pastors have always been very gracious to us, but we just grew up in a vicious cycle, not only in food addictions and things like that, but we grew up in a vicious cycle of paycheck to paycheck. We grew up with having more month than you had money. That's just the way it was. Mm -hmm. We grew up, Paul and I grew up, got married, same thing our parents did, we had to do. And that is put vacations on a credit card for one week out of the year and spend 11 months trying to pay that joker back. Mm -mm. That's, that was our life. Everything was paycheck to paycheck, but you ended up at the end of the month going, I don't, I don't know how we're going to do this or do that or get the kids some, some shoes or, you know, get them that backpack they need or whatever they need. I don't know if we can do that this year. I don't know if we can do that trip, you know, next weekend with all the others, because we just, we just don't have that kind of money. Uh, I remember sitting in church, Linda, and I just shared this, this past Wednesday night, I talked on sacred seed. I taught on sacred seed, man. There's something about sacred seed, putting sacred seed in the ground, gets you, uh, get you a multi a, a harvest. And so, um, um, I, I talked about how, uh, Paul and I grew up in a, in such a vicious cycle that, um, we had to have a mindset shift of, wait a minute, the Lord does not want us broke. Hmm. Always heard, well, Jesus had no place to lay his head. Well, he didn't have a place to lay his head, not because he was broke, but because the people were trying to take his head. That's yeah. why. And so, um, and so I know that there's four streams that fed the garden of Eden. Um, I know there's, there's four parts to the heart. I know the cow has four parts to his stomach. There's something about that four. I believe it's, I believe there's four streams feeding that garden for a reason. I believe you need mm -hmm. to have multiple streams of income. I believe that. I, I believe that, that um, we don't forsake the ministry. We, we are all in the ministry here. We are full-time in ministry, full-time in revival, full-time travel, um, but we're able to do full-time coaching. And so what it's done for us, just to be quite honest, I did not get into um, this whole health coaching thing for the money. I got into it because I wanted to help a couple of my friends and I wanted to be able to pay for my own box because yeah. we just didn't have the extra money to do it. And I took a, a leap of faith to purchase that first box. And when we did, I was like, my gosh, I wish I'd have found this 25, 30 years ago. And so we just wanted to make an, enough money to pay for our box and help a couple of friends. But then once we started getting the results, everybody, I mean, everybody in the church, all of our friends and family, Facebook friends, Instagram, Twitter, everybody's blowing it up going, what are you doing? Um, because this, I don't know if you can see this, this yes. was me before. Yes. That's yes. me after. Wow. And so, and so people started seeing that, that in my life and my wife, my wife dropped 26 pounds in two and a half months. People started looking at her face going, where's your face going? Where's your, and so, wow. um, what it's done for my wife and I, it has opened up a door for us. Um, people, people look at wealth two different ways. They either look like, like, I don't need the money. The Lord doesn't want us to have money. Money's the root of all evil. That's not true. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money mm -hmm. yes. is the root of all evil. The Lord is okay with you having money as long as money doesn't have you. That's good. Good. Why else would he say, I desire for you to prosper multiple times in the scripture. I desire for you to prosper. Third, third John one, two, can I read it? I don't want to yes. misquote it. I want to, I want to nail it. Beloved. I pray that you may prosper in all things, not some things, not most things, all things Amen. and be in health just as your soul prospers from Genesis to revelation. His desires for us to prosper. Why else would he tell Abraham, I want to bless you, Abraham? Linda, why did he say, I wanted to bless you, Abraham? He said, I want to bless you. I'll answer it for you. <laughs> Abraham, I will bless you to be a blessing. Yeah. We, was, we would sit in church. This is what I was going to share a few minutes ago. Me and Paula would sit in church. I just shared this Wednesday night. We would sit in churches 25 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. We'd sit in churches, guest speakers would come through, missionaries would come through, pastors would stand up. Hey guys, let's give, let's give sacrificially. Wow. Let's give till it hurts. Let's give. And me and Paula would look at each other, Linda, and, and say, Hey, can we give, can we give 20 bucks? Can we afford to give $25? Hmm. Hmm. Here's a missionary laid their life down to be in India 
to, to run an orphanage and preach the gospel every day of her life, rescue kids off the streets. And I'm going, hey, can I afford, Paula, can we afford to give 20 or $25? But yet, but yet we could afford McDonald's three times a week. We could afford Burger King. We could afford the, the, the Mexican restaurant. We could afford that. Not a problem. But to give into the kingdom. Yeah. We, we, we struggle with that. And I said, I don't want to struggle with that anymore. So now uh, the Lord has opened up the windows of heaven for us and, and is continuing to do that with our business. We, we coach. We don't make apologies for that. We, sh- we tell people, you can jump on this too. You can jump in. It cost me $50,000 in 1998 to start a construction business. $50,000 to buy a truck, a trailer, a backhoe to do my construction business. 50 grand. I didn't pay 50 grand to become a health coach. No. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't pay 5,000. I didn't pay 500. Yeah. I paid a sliver of that to become a health coach. And what it's done for us to help people all over the nation, all over the nation, phone blows up every morning, every afternoon, every evening. We, we, That's we do so full-time awesome. ministry. We do full-time health coaching. We help people take back their lives. And now we've got coaches all over the nation who are, a lot of them in ministry, um, paycheck to paycheck. But now through this opportunity, um, they have been able to, to really earn some beautiful income for them and their family and get time freedom and financial freedom for them, for the kids to do things, to travel, to see the world that the Lord gave us to go see. We get to do that. And so um, we make no bones about it, man. The Lord wants us to prosper and be a blessing to other people around us. And we're able to do that now. We're able to give to things we, we could have never dreamed of giving to, we're giving to now. So. Wow. Wow. That's just so awesome. Uh, what a blessing. What yeah. a blessing. For well, sure. I mean, there's really, I, I just can't even see why I would not want to connect and do this. You know, like, I mean, just listening to you, listening just to be able to also just pour into the body of Christ. And to help them and bless them. Um, yep. Again, um, while it's helping them physically, it's amazing too. But it is also financially blessing you, and then therefore you're blessing others. So it just it sounds yeah. beautiful. It sounds amazing. When I get those reports from from this guy in in Brazil, Indiana, that says, "Marty, I'm down 125 pounds." You gave me my life back. I'm like, eh, let's get something straight. I didn't give you your life back. I'm just the middleman. I'm just taking what we found as a tool, putting it in your hand. Um, but yeah, we have we have dads that reach out to us all the time. One dad, uh, he's in the the head office in Springfield, Missouri, of the Assemblies of God, reached out to me. He's like, Marty, I'm down over 100 pounds. I'm rock climbing with my kids that I've not been able to do for 17 years. Wow. And he said, thank you. Thank you for showing me and giving me this program, it's, it's changed my life. We have women that reach out and go, Marty, I have no back pain, no knee pain. The swelling's gone in my ankles. Um, I'm sleeping better. I used to be on this and that and whatever, and I'm not on those things anymore. Oh my gosh, I, I've got my life back. And so it's, it's just a common thing for us. This is what we do. We're backed by 20,000 medical doctors. The man who co-founded this program was one of the top 10 first board certified heart surgeons in America. He was the big deal already, but he took out of the, he had this epiphany. He's like, wait a minute, I'm earning incredible money, a heart transplants, triple bypass, doing all those things every right. day of his life. But he's like, wait, I need to get on the front end of this thing. I need to get on the preventative end of this thing. And so he pulled out of the medical field for about 18 months and studied nutrition, sleep, diet, all those things, and co-founded this program backed by 20,000 medical doctors. It's the, in, in, I think in 2020, we became the number two fastest growing company in the world for a reason, for a reason. We get wow. results. We get results. So. Wow. That is just, it's powerful. It's powerful. I'm so excited. Tell me, tell everyone here how they can connect with you. If this is something yep. that they would just like to just learn more about. I mean, what, what are the steps? Like, what do they need to do? Man, first thing, write this number down. 678-617-0308. Did he just give me like a, 
a, a burner phone number. Did he just give me a burner phone? Did he? Nope, that's my cell phone number. Why would he give his cell phone number out to all these people? Because we love what we do. My goodness, all these scam people get my phone number. All these scam guys blow my phone up. There you go. There you go. I'm on Facebook, Marty Derricott. You can find us there. Listen, no, no gimmicks, no sales pitch. That stuff is for the birds, man. We got something that works. We got yeah. something that gives massive results. I uh, just talked to a lady yesterday, first week on program, down nine, uh, nine pounds in her first seven days on program. Uh, we get results, man. Why wow. would you mess around? Why would you mess around trying to figure it out on your own? If you could have done it by now, wouldn't you've already have done it? Yes. Yep. So true. It's true. So they can just reach out to you and they can text you, contact you, and then you'll yep. get them. Facebook message, okay. however they want to reach out to me. That's okay. We're open. We're open for anybody. We just love to help open. people. Yeah, that is fabulous. That is fabulous. I hope that this, I hope that people that have um, gone to the revival and experienced the revival, I hope that they get to see this and, and watch this because I think they have, you know, a lot of people have no clue, you know, that, yeah, that there's yeah. other, you have other hats that you're wearing besides standing in the water for hours on end. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what I love wow. about this, this thing is, you know, past, you've been here, Pastor Todd will stand up on Sunday nights and let the, let the people know um, if they want to partner with the North Georgia Revival, it takes about $3,000 or so for all the bills and the things it takes to water and chemicals for the pools, both pools, we have two pools. Um, all the necessities of the scrubs, the towels, the um, all the everything we would use for the crowds, the masses that come every Sunday night to a revival costs about three three thousand dollars. And so my wife and I were able to sponsor one night of a North Georgia revival. So this is why we believe in what we have. We believe yes. in what we're a part of. We don't just talk about it. We sew back into it, man. I and it won't it. be the first time. There'll be multiple times we get to do this. Why? Because we love it. It's kingdom. Yes. This, this is the kingdom. The kingdom is here. Yes. It's time is. to take back our minds. Time to take back our will, our emotions, our bodies, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Amen. Let's do this thing. Now's the time. Let's go. Amen. 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 Oh, I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for doing uh, this. It's I, an honor. I, I believe that so many people are going to be blessed from this. I can't wait to hear all the connections that have been made from this. But I mean, I appreciate you so much. It's just, I love you guys. I love everybody in Georgia. I'll be there in a few weeks. So uh, can't wait I, to see you again. Man. Tell Todd hey, I said hello. I will tell my Todd, my Todd. Yeah. Um, hey, everybody, <laughs> why not? Speaking in tongues, this, um, I have, I teach a class, a free class uh, with this. So you can go to my website, which is lindacuar.com and sign up for that. If anybody, if anybody's curious and watching this and, you're interested in that um so that's powerful i love it thank i love you, it thank Linda. you thank you so much bless you bless you my friend we'll see you soon okay bye-bye